Oh, sorry. I was just taking out the rubbish that was 2021. God, what a poor year. Although, it wasn't all bad, I guess. One thing that didn't disappoint was the films that came out last year. I watched 80 new and original films last year. Fun fact, you can actually find my reviews for some of these films and the actual list itself on my letterbox. So, yeah, go follow that. I'm currently recording this under a cover. And throughout the year, I ranked and reviewed them. So I think it's time we take a look back at the highs and lows of last year in film. It's only right then we start at the lowest of lows. just stop making films of this franchise like i know this is meant to be a jokey video but this isn't actually a joke i'm I, i'm begging can we just stop making purge films which film i'm i'm being serious i completely forgot i had seen this until i looked at my list look i gave it two stars all right didn't have enough tigers in it Look, I love Owen Wilson. Like, I thought he was amazing in Loki, but even he couldn't save this one. For a film about coming to America, they forgot to stay in America. Like, am I an idiot? Like, look, if Pedro Pascal gave me one wish, I would wish that he didn't have to suffer being cast in that film because God, he deserves better than that. This is a bit of a brag, but the only reason I kind of enjoyed the experience of watching this film was because I got to ask the director a question, asked how long it took, he said, it took about 15 days, similar length of, you know, the original Halloween, but other than that, this is like my least favourite type of horror. Now, 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 I know you'll all want to argue over the position of this film on this list, but can we at least agree that Death Fatale is sexy? I mean, come on! Honestly, I'll give the screenwriters credit because I think they really embodied Carnage throughout the film. Because the script and the story was a complete and utter mess. I mean, at least it was better than Joss Whedon's version. I, I don't have a joke for this one, I just really don't care for this film. I mean, at least it was better than Zack Snyder's Justice League. Jake, look, I'm one of the few people left on your side after you know, the whole Taylor Swift situation last year, but even I can't defend you being in a film that bad. The version I've watched genuinely didn't have subtitles for the, you know, the sign language bit. Not that it mattered, because I didn't care about the story, I cared about the monster fighting. I mean, at least the action was cool. Is it bad that my parents genuinely looked at me a bit weird when Rick and Morty cameoed? I mean... They went to space. Enough said. Look, I went to see that film to see good fashion and a good film. And only one of them delivered. You can say all you want about this film. But Keanu Reeves being cast as a game developer the most accurate casting of last year. Prove me wrong. I watched this to see Abed and John Ralphio fighting over a superpowered squirrel, and I was not disappointed. I, I find it hilarious that he thinks Cherry would have been his Oscar winning performance when Spider-Man also came out this year, like, this isn't a dig, I just genuinely would have enjoyed it more if I saw it in Japanese. <laughs> Is it just me who would really love to do that? Let's see. I'm really annoyed that Starships by Nicki Minaj wasn't playing over the final credits of the film. Because... Let's go to the beach, eat, let's go get away. I mean, it's got all you want in a 2021 action film. Gerard Butler. And cops getting shot. Wait a minute. 
Is this just Friday the 13th? This is Disney's Devil Wears Prada. And I mean that in the best way. I mean the rock actually turns into rock. Can you get any better? To say it's called No Time To Die, it definitely spends too much time getting there. Chloe Zhao, he didn't tell me there'd be jump scares in this film. Like, <laughs> when them plates shattered on the floor, I was off. I screamed my heart out. Won't lie to you, it combines two of my scariest things. The dark and houses. It's got Nick Cage. It's got Nick Cage fighting possessed animatronics. It's got Nick Cage playing pinball. It's the greatest film of all time. What more could you want? Leslie Knope would be very proud of how good a job Amy Poehler did on this film. Look, this is this isn't a joke. I just need to see more of Billy Barker. I mean, look how cool he is. he was the best like killer. We didn't see enough of him. Oh my god. I could genuinely watch like a full franchise or like a full TV series set in this world. I, I don't know why it hasn't been commissioned yet. It's so cool. Those first 20 minutes I still haven't left my mind. I'm not even here for the horror anymore. I'm just there for Vera and Patrick. Ultimate couple of gold. I finally used my 90 GCSE English for something useful. Could understand this film. I'm pointing it out there. We don't talk about Bruno deserves song of the year. I mean, how cool is it that we got a full horror trilogy last year that just didn't suck? I had a great time then three weeks it was coming out. All right. I get why Anthony Hopkins won now. Child of the year. Child of the year. I had a great time watching this with my mum. From laughing at it at the start for it being ridiculous to both our minds being blown at the best twist of the year. James Wan, you're insane, but it works. As a future director, it's just so disheartening to see Steven Spielberg never do a bad job. It... <laughs> Give the rest of us a chance, man. The biggest surprise of the year was Leonardo DiCaprio having a normal age wife. I never knew that I needed Adam Driver in a musical until I watched this. And now every film needs Adam Driver singing in it. This film genuinely felt like a fever dream. Like, I can't even tell you what it was really about. I desperately need a freaky Happy Death Day crossover like, like yesterday. Why isn't it out yet, Blumhouse? Why isn't it? No joke, the Kingsman way of capturing action throughout all three of the films is one of my favourite stars of all time. It's up there with John Wick for me. The only issue with this film is that it should have been out like seven years ago at this point. Other than that, it's great. My girlfriend gets really annoyed that I've placed Free Guy one higher than Black Widow, and she's gonna get really annoyed that I've specifically mentioned it in this video. I genuinely would say Candyman five times just to get Yaya in my life. I'm that desperate. Okay, let's just be straight up. This should have won more awards. Can we just put that out there? More awards for One Night in Miami. If you want me to sum up Malcolm and Marie quickly, mac and cheese and monologues. DC, take note, this this is how you do speedster. Look, if you ignore the sprinklings of pedophilia, there's a really good film here. Joaquin Phoenix, I will always know you for more than just Joker. I wish Nicolas Cage cooked me food so good that I broke down into tears. Look, the final act of this film involves Home Alone on steroids and Christopher Lloyd with a shotgun. Need I say more? Where is my Disney Plus series set in this world? Huh? 
Sylvester Stallone as King Shark is best cast in this movie, yeah, no doubt. It's now my dream to sing Hotel California with Simu Liu. Silencio Bruno was the motto I used to get through last year. I have never been so satisfied sitting in a cinema before. I'm sorry for whoever had to clean up after me. For some reason, I decided to see this one in IMAX, and I think I genuinely had a heart attack at some point. God, I just love musicals. I want to be Ron when I grow up. I need part two injected into my veins right now. The funniest scene of this year is without a doubt, all the mini marshmallow men in the supermarket killing themselves. I just love Andrew Garfield, just give him all the awards, either for this film or for, for, for this film. He, he hasn't been in anything else last year, I don't know what you're on about. Every year has won a standout animated film. And without a doubt, Mitchell's is 2021. So need to know two things about me. I love time loop films and I love love. Does this also prove my last point? I'm genuinely so proud to be from the same country as Daniel Kaluuya. What a star. I will shout this from the rooftop. Alan Kim was robbed at the Oscars. Look, I watched this for Bo Burnham. But I came out being addicted to that toxic cover they played near the end. Look, this film simultaneously broke me and inspired me. I think it did the same to everyone. Edgar Wright's my favourite director of all time, and this proves why. What can I say? That is. And we're done. God, that was a lot of films. I mean, if I really had the care and patience, I'd find out how many hours or days or weeks I spent watching films last year. But uh, this has already taken long enough. Anyways, we had a real variety of stories being told last year, a real odyssey of creation and, and memories being made. Look, I do need to go and throw out the trash that was 2021, but let's not forget the good things that happened last year because it wasn't all bad. And I now know you're all thinking, what will 2022 bring? Well, why don't we find out? <laughs>